This was the fourth time that I've seen this. It is so great to watch it with the Broadway community. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lonnie Price. <clears throat> Over here, you. Oh, wow, what was it like? Are we on? Can you hear us? Hello? Yeah. Perfect. What was tonight like for you? Uh, you know, I, I, I haven't, you know, we, I haven't seen it with an audience um, very much. And uh, uh, it, it's moving and uh, it reminds me how much of it's not mine and how much, how grateful I am to our great editor, Ricky Portner, and uh, Ted Schillinger and Kit, and uh, and Bruce Klein. So um, it was a real collaboration. It's the most collaborative thing I've ever done. I didn't know what I was doing for yeah. a long time, and uh, everybody taught me a lot. So I sit there watching it and just feel really grateful for all of the, um, uh, it's, uh, it's better than I ever thought it was going to be, you know? So uh, I'm just very excited by it, you know? You're a filmmaker now. That's amazing. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, but yes. okay, yeah, yeah, okay, thanks. Mm. Okay, you said it took eight and a half years working on this film. Yeah. Was there any time along the way that you wanted to give it up? Well, as Kit reminded me, it was uh, about a year and a half ago, it was referred to us by us by as that fucking documentary. <laughs> you know, so it's just like, that fucking doc. Um, no, no, no. Um, no, uh, we struggled a lot yeah. um, because of it's about the making of the show and it's what happens to us. And uh, it felt like, for a while, it felt like two different movies. And so getting the transition into the, the second half of it um, was tricky and eluded us for quite a long time. And also there was what to do with me. Uh, was I in it? I didn't want to be in it for the longest time. I just wanted it to be about them. I did not want it to be about me. And um, I learned that it had to be a personal thing and that I was in the middle of it. Um, so that, was, uh, that took me a while to, to come to the party of that. And fascinatingly enough, I wanted to interview every single person in the show. And um, like Stephen Howe, because Merrily uh, had all those people in it and uh, they each had stories that went through the night. And as previews went on, they cut them away and they focused on the five or six principles. And I learned that I had to do that too. So that was a great learning uh, experience. And um, so, I, I, I don't know, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does yeah, yeah. Okay. What your biggest obstacles or challenges were? That was huge. It was what to do with me. Yeah. Um, and then um, how to make the second half of it feel inevitable. So that you didn't think it was like, oh, we're just here to see the story of the making of the show, but that it's about the people in the show. And um, that was tricky and, uh, and took us a long, long time. When did you actually finish it? Where? When did you do it? Um, when, you, when were you finally finished? Guys, when did we, did we, yesterday? When did we finish this? I, I don't know, a couple months ago? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a, I, I guess a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah, um, yes. Well, the film premiered at the New York Film Festival. What was that evening like, watching it on the big screen? And was that the first time the, the cast members who put yeah, it Yeah, 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 yeah. It was scary, you? yeah. I mean, it was, first of all, it was great. It's this gorgeous theater with this great sound and this huge screen. And, you know, you're 40 feet in the air. And it's, yeah. I mean, this is quite beautiful, too. Um, so um, I'm always reminded of when I watch myself, you know, the, the, the call came in that we found it. And... <clears throat> They said, come tomorrow, and I went, I'm on my way, you know, and I ran down, and I just looked like hell because, and Matt, my, um, uh, my associate for the last 10 years, said, I think I'm going to bring the camera. I went, don't bring the camera. Uh, nobody wants to see me watching this movie. Don't bring the... And uh, so that's why I look like hell. Um, <laughs> but um, what was your question? That was it. What was that whole evening like? I mean... That evening was insane, and I was just concerned that I wanted the cast to feel that... Um, we honored them and did them proud and that they would feel good about it. And uh, so far, every single one of them has been okay with it. I've been great with it. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Beautiful. Mark from Cleveland. Thank you very much. Um, so that, that, that's, that was really important to me because you're making a movie about your friends. Yeah. And in as much as you want to be truthful, you also want to be kind and um, loving and uh, you've asked them to be very vulnerable so you you have a responsibility to that and not to embarrass them or um and they saw nobody saw a cut of it until it was finished so uh they had a lot of faith in us so i'm glad they feel good about it do you think they were so honest and vulnerable because you're all in it together sure yeah absolutely and and i think it's if some 
and it was me asking the question. So I think that made it easier, easier for them, you know? Um, so yeah, I think so. Sure. Let's talk about the boxes of original footage. Okay. And how did you finally uncover it? Because you were told it didn't exist anymore. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, um, we, um, I've been thinking about them for years, uh, many years. And um, when Bruce came on board as producer, you know, I said, got to find the footage, got to find the footage. And uh, we hired this guy who these people do that. They, they find footage. And um, that's all he does. And his name is John Miller Monzon. And we had a meeting with him and he, we told him everything. And he said, well, I think there's a 9% chance that this exists. Nine, not 10 even, nine. nine. It was not encouraging. Uh, but there's something, I just knew it was there. I just, I, I just had this idea that they didn't throw that away. And the reason why it never got completed, which you might want to know, is ABC Corporation had an investment in the show. They found out after they started filming. And that was a conflict of interest. Today, no one would care. But then we had some, some uh, scruples, I guess. And uh, so they pulled it and, um, oh, hello. Uh, they pulled it and further, uh, they realized also that they would have to pay everybody SAG minimum. And uh, they didn't have the money. So they not only pulled it, but said they destroyed it because they didn't want, isn't that funny? And here we are at SAG. I just realized yeah. that. <laughs> they didn't want to pay anybody. Um, sound familiar? Actors, they didn't want to pay anybody. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so they pulled it and, uh, so they, they told us it was destroyed and it was actually in a, you know, it was fresh negative at mag. So yeah. it was buried, you know, you have to bury it in a cold place in Connecticut under, in a mountain where they bury things. Um, and so we were so, I mean, it was the Holy grail. I mean, to find it was just extraordinary. So, um, oh, and interestingly enough, we kept looking for it and we type into the database. They did. I didn't Broadway, Merrily, Alvin Theater, Stephen Sondheim, Hal Prince, nothing, nothing, nothing. Musical, nothing. And finally they went back one more time and they typed in B way, B apostrophe W A Y and 37 boxes of film <gasps> popped up on the screen. So it was just a miracle. And as you see opening them, yeah. it was like they were waiting for us. They hadn't been touched for, all those years. So I feel like it was kind of maybe they were waiting for me to come back to Sure. Them. Where were you when you were watching it? Where was that machine? Uh, it, uh, we're at ABC, at ABC News. Yeah, at ABC uh, on 65th Street. And uh, curiously enough, like a few blocks away from where I live, it was where they were, or where they brought them to. But anyway, but yeah, it's uh, ABC News. One of the most beautiful, one of the many beautiful moments in this film is when you watch your interview. Mm. And you talk a little bit about it. What did you learn the most about watching your younger self? Um, the inevitability of my life, that that kid was not going to be talked out of it. Yeah. He just was not. Nobody could have ever talked him out of it. And, um, you know, you realize the price you've paid for the life you've lived. And, um, uh, and my 50s now looking back, which is why I also wanted to make the movie, is you know, you start to think about your choices and um, what you pay to hold on to your dreams and what you pay to give them up. And um, looking at that, I realized there was not, I didn't have a choice actually, um, that I was so in love with all of it that uh, it was just no wonder. It just was just, that was what I was gonna be, you know? Yeah. Mm. Did Hal Prince come to your dressing room the night after you opened? He did. What did he say to you? Oh, it's just, Beautiful. It's either the night after or it's yeah. the night before we, the night we closed. And uh, I think it was the night after. And he said, um, I'm sorry I didn't give you a hit. He said, I, I wanted to. He said, I, I think I gave you a good show, but I didn't give you a hit. And I'm real sorry about that. Yeah. And that broke my heart because it was like, the thing is, is Hal and Steve has felt guilty for 35 years that they disappointed the kids. Mm -hmm. And the truth is we were so... It was such a gift for us to be doing that. We never ever thought that and we certainly never blamed them. The amount of work, now that I'm a director of the theater, in the theater, the amount of work they did in five weeks of previews was extraordinary. They just rolled up their sleeves and they just, and they never made us feel responsible for it not working. Uh, they were always supportive and wonderful to us. They were really just terrific. So um, I'm sorry, I hope that the film Finally, I think Hal may be not feeling quite as guilty. Yeah. Um, I hope so, that because uh, we love them and still do, so. Well, look at the reunion concert that you put together. I mean, yeah. you brought Sondheim and Prince together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it came, that was another full circle moment. It was, it was. That was a beautiful moment, them hugging, um, and that felt like that, he, that, that healed some 
and then I think, I, I hope the film heals a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. You had like 52 previews before you opened. I yeah. think the number's 52. Mm. Listening to Steve Sondheim talk about the chaos yeah. sounded so exciting. Like when you, when you heard about those things, like he said, in movies, how shows are put together yes. of like throwing scripts under the door and rewriting and writing new numbers for all of you. What was that time like for you? Well, it, was, it, was, it was thrilling and a little scary. Um, I mean, they would do things like, I don't think they would, I don't think now as a director, I would ever do what they did to us. <laughs> uh, the one that's sort of a famous story is that, that we had a turntable and in opening doors, opening doors, singing, and I'm pushing the piano with Jimmy and Annie is pushing a uh, typewriter table with cigarette butts and all. And at one point Hal goes, oh, we don't have time to rehearse it. The turntable's gonna go a little faster tonight. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You don't do that to actors. You really don't. You know, it's like, and we went, oh, okay. And we're opening door, Whoa! and it starts to go, and the piano starts to go into the pit. And Paul Gemignani is conducting, trying to save his life. And it was, it was just, and it was horrible. And then the table fell over, and all the cigarette butts fell. And then Jason came on, of course, and looked at us and went, why don't you clean up this mess? Which brought the house down, but I hated him for 30 years because I thought, why don't you pick up the fuck fucking ashes? You know, that would help. Instead of like getting a joke out of it for you, how about helping? Uh, P.S. He's a big star, so there you go. He was right. Um, but that it was kind of, that was one of the few things where they, you, you, they, I think they just, you know, they, they sort of pushed the envelope with us. But also, you're so young, you learn it. Yeah. You just learn it. One time we were doing uh, Old Friends and they had decided Old Friends had to stop the show. Had to stop the show. Never stop the show. And we had a huge dance, like a four minute dance. And we rehearsed it for days. And, you know, it went in and went out the next night, which was fine. But at one point we were doing, because you're rehearsing the new thing during the day and playing the old one at night. And so we got out there and we started singing and the three of us had no idea what to do. And we just looked at each other and just laughed. And the band played and we just stood there because we truly didn't remember which version was in tonight it was like is this the new version i don't know just the new so that was there was a little of that but mostly it was it was fun and uh and we knew it was getting better yeah. so we were very heartened uh that it was getting better you were one of the most sought after directors what did you learn from hal prince during that process respect. that you use in your work respect yeah respect for everybody in the building and that the uh, stage door man is as important as the writer or the star. And, um, hey, Ed. And uh, that that is, the way you, that is the way you conduct yourself in the theater, both Steve and Hal. And um, I hope that that's how I've behaved because um, they're right. And um, that was a great, that was a wonderful lesson at 15, 16, 21, to watch them work and to see that they never, there was no temperament and there was never blame. There were never tears. They never made anybody cry, which, as you know, sometimes people do. And they never did. And um, they just uh, respected everybody. So I would say respect is what I learned from both of them that I hope continue to, to practice. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, you say you never directed Meryl Lieber all along. A no. Production. No. What's taking you so long? That's it. Yeah, this is it, right? That's it, yeah. yeah Perfect. Yeah. I know we have some potential filmmakers in the house tonight. So having just made this beautiful, bittersweet film, what advice would you give them? Gosh, well, you know, I mean, I, 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 I didn't know anything about this form and it's a very tricky form because it's, I'm used to working in a narrative where you're building a story and you have a story. But this is, even though we had a timeline, the show opens and closes and what happens to everybody, you can tell the story in 98,000 different ways and we did. And we tried every single one of them over, over a long time. And um, uh, I actually watched it tonight thinking, I don't know why it's working as well as it is. I mean, I, I think it's working now, but it was, it's fixing little things. Just, it's like in the theater. You just keep fixing another problem and another problem and another problem. And then somehow all of a sudden it becomes more than the sum of its parts. Um, it's, a, it's a very hard form. I wouldn't do it again. And um, I, uh, I just think it's really, Hard. <laughs> it's the hard. Bruce yeah. said it's going to be the hardest thing you ever did, and I went, "It's not going to be the hardest." Nine years later, it was the hardest thing I ever did, and uh, I really admire people who do it because you needs an incredible amount of tenacity and um, patience, 
And uh, I, I have a great deal of both of those, but not maybe as much as even you need for this form. Because that was one of my questions. Would you like to tackle another subject and maybe do it again? No. <laughs> but, but, but also, I'm 57 in nine years. I mean, I'd be, you know, I, I don't have, I'm not living that long. You know, how many? <laughs> I would have one more in me, and then no. I wanted to, uh, you know, I, I, I like the theater. So that's why. Well, I was going to ask you what is next for you, but I think some of us already know you're about to direct Glenn Close on Broadway in Sunset Boulevard. I am, that's what right. can you tell us? Yes. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us? Um, what can I tell you? Uh, it, it's a new production, and it um, it's not doesn't have a lot of sets, and it's um, and uh, we're not playing uh, her as uh, forgive me as a grotesque, you know, as you know, it's uh, it's a middle aged woman fighting for her life. In 1950, when the movie came out, Gloria Swanson was 50 and William Holden was 30, and that was a scandal. It's not a scandal today. Uh, people have different way of looking at age and romance, and uh, and that's. So it, it reflects, I think, more of um, how we view uh, gaps in relationships. And she's, she's, she gets progressively crazier, but she's not, she doesn't start out as, um, as batshit crazy. She just doesn't. <laughs> so, and Glenn, it, wonderful thing about it, Glenn, of course, had played it 20 years ago, and uh, her ability, her willingness to look at it freshly and to say, uh, I don't need to do what I did. What do we want to do now? And uh, that was a great gift to me because otherwise you're just doing a museum piece and you're just sort of staging what was. So it's, it's quite f new and um, I'm real proud of it and I hope you all come to see it. Please come. She's great. She's great. So finally, could you sum up the best part of the experience with this film? No, it's, it's going to sound corny, but I would have to say it's my collaboration with my, my, my fellow collaborators is um, learning how to collaborate, learning how to not dig your heels in, learning how to listen. Uh, I always think the best idea wins, and um, I always think that anyway, but in this, really just kind of knowing, I don't know a lot about this form, they know better, and um, let's try their way. And a lot of times it was right, most times it was right, and then sometimes I was right. I mean, we all, but I, 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 it was a great collaboration. I just keep thinking, you know, it took a village. Sorry for bringing up that. It, it, it was, yeah. I got that. Well, it's been a beautiful job. You Thank you. I remember man. sitting, I think, seeing you in Class Enemy, and then, of course, being oh at the God. Alvin wow. for Merrily Roll Along, and now you become this incredible director. Oh, that's nice. So it's great to be sitting here with you tonight. Thank you very much. Let's Thank you very much. Let's hear it for Lonnie Price. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.